Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. You gonna get in on it today. Woo, we're gonna have a good time. I'm telling you that, well, hey, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this broadcast today. We open our hearts, yes. we open our minds for revelation for, from heaven. And we thank you for it. We receive it. We have ears to hear. And we, <laughs> glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Today is a special day of revelation, saith the Lord. Open your heart, open your mind for the things that I have for you today most of you have never heard or thought of. So rejoice and understand that I'm in the middle of it, yes, saith the Lord of hosts. Whoa, glory, glory to God. God. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. What a day. Now that's, that's very unusual. The it's Lord just, very unusual. Uh, wow. just the word of the Lord come right on the, right on the first of the broadcast, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. Now I want to introduce somebody special to you that has just, um, has just exploded in <laughs> glory in my life. It, it's just amazing. We were, um, uh, last summer, we were, uh, Gloria ministered with this young, young woman in, uh, in Hawaii with Kelly at a, a women's conference in uh, Honolulu. And Oh my, Gloria came home talking about this and Kelly came home talking about her and talking about her ministry and her life. Well, of course I had to get in on it. So <laughs> I started reading her books and I thought, yeah, I'll tell you what, we're going to have this woman on a broadcast. Praise the Lord. So would you join me this morning in welcoming Dr. Caroline oh, Leaf. Thank you I'll Steve. tell you, Caroline, thank you. Well, thank you. So much thank for you. being on this broadcast with thank us. You. Thank you so much. We love you and appreciate you. I don't, it's such an honor. Thank I don't you. know where you've been the last <laughs> but you just, you just exploded into our lives oh. and it, my goodness, it is such a blessing. She is a, um, a neuroscientist. Now, let me tell you what that is. She knows good stuff about your brain. <laughs> <laughs> she is a brain researcher. Now you got to have a lot of brains to research That's the right. brains and she's got the brains to do it with. That's you understand? Right. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Let, let's open up here in um, 2 Timothy and we're going to look, I want to read the, the uh, first chapter, the sixth and seventh verses. Wherefore, I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God, which is in you by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a yes, sound amen. mind. Amen. Praise God. Now, before, uh, before we get into this, I would like very much for you to give, uh, give your testimony and, and let everybody know who you are. And, and, and they, they, you, you've got audience on TBN. I don't know where I've been. I mean, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, you've been my teacher. I, you don't realize that. For, 30, for 20, nearly 30 years, you've been my teacher. You've been, you and Gloria have literally taught me everything that I know about when it comes to the Word of God. Right. You have every book you've ever written, every DVD you've ever done, every tape you've ever, the old days when there were still tape cassettes, we had all of those. You, it was right oh, from when I, I had my back. So my you've mind. been my teacher without knowing it. Well, you know, I, I heard that there's certain comments that you now said, Gloria, she's one of us. <laughs> I'm one of you. <laughs> and then I, I found out then that, that, uh, that you came from South Africa. Yes. And of course we've had offices and staff in South Africa for yes. many, many, many yes. years. And we're going back next year. Glory oh, to God. So that's we're going to get to be in Rhema. That's wonderful. That's, uh, the, that's where we come from. Yeah. We and that's, uh, that's where Mac got born again. That's you told right. me this morning. Yes. That's well, right. that's, that, 
I was preaching there and your husband got born again. Exactly. Small Isn't that incredible? World. Incredible. <laughs> He completely it's, changed his life. Awesome. You completely changed his life. Every every time he wanted to reach for the bottle, he reached for one of your your books or tapes or DVDs Praise or whatever, God. and totally got over alcoholism and became a Praise fired up for the Holy Spirit and God, and became Glory a walking Bible. Changed everything. <laughs> my, my, everything my. changed the whole course of our lives. That's what is so much fun. Yes. About living and walking in faith. Oh, totally. The divine connections. Yes, and you don't know where they're going to land. Oh. I mean, we've watched you for years, so to be here with you now is like a dream and Praise honor. God. Praise God. Well, we are certainly honored to have you here. Tell, mm -hmm. give, give us some of, your, some of your story. Well, I'm a, a cognitive neuroscientist and a communication pathologist, so I've studied the brain, as you said, and looked at how, um, how we, the, what we say and what we do reflects on what we think. So I've studied the science of thought, how we think, what is the mind, how does the mind change the brain, how, how is the mind led by the spirit, what is the spirit soul body thing. So from a spiritual side, I've looked at it from that angle. And then as a scientist, I've looked at it from the whole thing of how does the mind change the brain, because I see the mind and the brain as being separate things. Mm -hmm. So I've spent 30 years in research. I've done lots of research projects. We're still we're currently busy with research projects. I practice as a clinician for 25 years. And then for the last six years, I've been traveling the globe, teaching the link between brain science and the Bible. And I have my own TV show now on TBN. Um, I basically, this is all I do now, four or five days a week, I'm in conferences, I preach most Sundays in churches. <laughs> if you told right. me that I was going to do this a few years ago, I would never have dreamed this because I was a lecturer, scientist, therapist. Now I teach this around the world and I'm preaching, as I said, most Sundays I'm preaching in churches and teaching people that, the power, that we have a love power and a sound mind, that this is the norm, that we can choose, Praise that God. we have control, mm -hmm. that we can do life, we can rejoice despite the circumstances, that it really is what the Word says is really true. You know, so science is a wonderful, tangible bridge for crossing between the spiritual and the, and the practical reality of living in life. Because you know, we take the word and we believe it and we love it and then we're in life and we've got to do life and sometimes there's this disconnect and I, I see science as a wonderful way of building a bridge between those two. I've been born again for years. I was nine years old when I was born again, so I've pretty much been a Christian my whole life. So it's the most natural thing for me as a scientist to marry it with the word because God made everything. So I just see science as God revealing how he mm -hmm. made everything, how our brain works, how we physically work, how the physical world works, how the temporal world works versus the spiritual world, you know, just to help us to get closer to him. So I see science very much in that way. Now, I... Um The scientific world has by and large discounted God's Word. Yes. But the reason for that is it's taken them a long time to catch up with it. Exactly. It's not that the Bible was behind. No, not at all. It's that they were way behind. And they still are. <laughs> and, but if they had started with the Word, they'd be way ahead of where they are. Exactly, that's exactly, because science literally dies one funeral at a time. So as one revelation is brought forth, then something new comes up and it has to be changed and things keep changing all the time. Every, you know, they take science as being factual, and this is it, this is the proof. Then five years later, that's completely wrong and there's something new. So it's like God inspires and reveals little bit by little bit. So he inspires the scientists to reveal, but if they don't acknowledge, he, you know, he then he, he reveals another layer and another layer. So what we're having now in the world of science is an unprecedented thing that hasn't happened before, which is that 20, about 20, up to 20%, I think it's 20 to 25% of scientists that didn't believe are now starting to believe because the level where science is going is so revolutionary that the traditional way of evolution and, and all that just, it just doesn't work. It doesn't, it mm -hmm. doesn't, you know, and, and most scientists will say if you ask them why they're doing what they do, like quantum physicists and all these like really intelligent people, you, you say, well, you know, what is your purpose? What do you, they always answer, well, we're trying to find out who we are and where we came from, which goes back to what you just said. We know who we are and we know where we came from. <laughs> you know, we're from yeah. God, you know, so as it says in Colossians 1, but I think it's 15 through 18, we, we all come from God, we are all one with God. And that's what all of it points, all the signs points back to that. That's why I love it. Praise right. God. Hey, awesome. man. You, um,
you pointed out and brought really, really, um, help me, Lord, the, um, the revelation of the Word, like bringing into cap captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ or to the obedience of His anointing and casting down imaginations, reasonings, mm -hmm. In Second um, Corinthians yes, 10, ten, three, four, and five, mm. where, where it talks about the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Now, what I, what I had seen in the Word in, in that yeah. is that we were created to have strongholds. Yeah that our stronghold should be the Word of God. Exactly. Our stronghold should be walking in the love of God and the power of forgiveness. These are empowered things. Exactly. They're mighty. And that word translated mighty means the ability to accomplish anything possible or impossible. Exactly. The, the, literally the anointing of the living God that resides in us. Now, that means that a stronghold of something else uh, that, that, that God didn't create us to be thinking whatsoever, think on these things, whatsoever the things that are good, just, lovely, good report, and so virtue, and praise, and so on. Now, when you get outside that, then you're in a danger zone. Totally. That it, the, and, 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 then, and then I got into your book. Oh, and I'm sitting there reading this book and I thought, oh yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it comes down there and it says, our brains are wired for love. Isn't that the most amazing And thing? forgiveness. That's good, isn't that And, and uh, Yeah, oh. but, but here's what just, just, just like shocking me with something that said, <laughs> when, you, when you think other than that, you actually damage your brain. You physically mm. damage your brain. Wow. Now I That's thought, good. whoa. Isn't that amazing? That for me was, was just the, there's so many revelations. I get so excited every day. Uh, because that's why I've got these trees over here. Just to, to highlight what you've just said, because you've highlighted a really good start point to understand this concept. Because like that green tree over there represents the love zone. So if you think of the fact that we are wired for love, we have a, we have a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. So this is the love zone. We don't have a spirit of fear. This is the fear zone. So that's the love zone and that's the fear zone. Oh, yeah. Now, thoughts are real things. They occupy mental real estate because God says, bring all thoughts into captivity. So what we see from science is that right now, as you think, as you're hearing, hearing me, I'm generating a signal. At quantum speeds, your brain is processing that signal. You're causing your DNA to express and you are actually making proteins that are physically capturing the words that you're hearing me say. Because we're speaking life, we're growing healthy thoughts. So healthy thoughts are what we're designed to build. Everything about every chemical, neurotransmitter, structure, circuit, everything about the brain and the body are only wired for the love zone, the love power and sound mind. So when we make a wrong choice, the proteins still express, the DNA still is impacted, so the signal still hits the DNA, which then causes the genes to actually literally make proteins, but the, they fold incorrectly because now we're not wired for a distorted signal. So when we make a wrong choice, we cause that signal to cause the protein to fold incorrectly. So we build a thought still, because that's the design God has designed, the physical to capture the mind. It just represents the mind. The, the, the mind controls the brain. So the brain simply is like almost like a photocopying machine. It captures the thoughts. And if it's a distorted signal, we then grow, a, the protein folds incorrectly. So we still grow the thought, but it looks different in the brain. Mm -hmm. And that's abnormal. Normal. So, and that creates a whole pattern of brain damage that we can, I can 
talk to you about as we go through the different episodes. Mm -hmm. But the big picture is it looks different, it's inflamed, and it throws the body into a negative state of stress. So it's basically brain damage, it's neurodegeneration that we create in our brain through every toxic choice. And that's where Romans 12, 2, renewing of the mind. When we renew our mind, then basically we can bring all those into captivity. So we, we can bring, the, with our yes, good thinking, amen. bring those into captivity and literally break them down. So we can actually, we, we, we through our mind can build, we through our mind can pop them away. And it takes, it takes time, it takes 21 times three. So it takes 63 days and these things get out of our head. So we're not bound by these. So what we wire in, we so can it wire takes out. Twenty one days to rewire. That's right, twenty one days to break it down and then another twenty one day two cycles of twenty one days okay. to build as you're breaking down, you're building a healthy replacement thought. And then it takes another two day two, two cycles of twenty one days. So a total of sixty three days to basically build a new pattern. That has to have enormous impact on chronic disease. Oh, totally. Unbelievable. Because That's where it in, comes in from. In both of those cases now. Um, as I'm sitting here looking at those side by side, you don't just have thoughts. There's going to be words come from those. That's exactly it, because your words come from thoughts. Words aren't random events. Actions aren't random events. We first think, then we speak. Then you speak. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And now, when you, when you speak them, they then become think. reality. Exactly. Well, the reality is there, but when you speak them, you reinforce them. They get bigger. They get yeah. stronger. You give them more strength. And then those, when you speak words, Jesus said, my words are not my own. It's the Father that dwells within me. Mm. He does the works. That's it. So he was getting his, his words from God. He only said what he heard his Father say. Exactly. Only did what he saw his Father do. Mm. So his thoughts fell under Isaiah 55, where God said, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Exactly. My ways higher than your ways. Exactly. But then he said, well, I know all that's true, dummy, but you'll just have to, no, no. He said, but my word goes forth. Yeah. So exactly. with, with his word, we come up to his level of thought. Exactly. We use his word to do brain surgery. We, get, we use his word to eliminate those. So how accurate, think how accurate the word is when it talks about renewing your mind. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, that's what you're doing. You're renewing. Yeah. In renewing your mind, you don't conform to the world, but being transformed yeah, right. by the renewing of your, um, of your mind. Man. Praise God. Mm, mm, mm. Glory. That's amazing. Um, we've got about three or four minutes here, and there's, there's something I'd, I've been wanting to ask you ever since I read your first book, oh. uh, read the first book of yours that I read. Yeah. Uh, the... When... Uh, Lazarus was at outside the rich man's door. Rich man fared sumptuously. They both died. The rich man went into hell. He saw Father Abraham. Now Abraham said, son, remember. Mm. Now his brain is on the surface up there somewhere with that body. His spirit is in hell and his memory is intact. There you go. So his memory, his mind, which is part of the soul, yeah. I mean, it, it, it is intact. It's intact, spirit, soul, body. Yeah. So the brain and the mind are Two different things. Two different things. And and I I, I um, and I was and I was reading this in your in your book, and you have scientifically proven that they're two different things. Yes. And I knew it was all the time, but but uh, we deal in revelation concept and precept. You deal in in revelation and scientific fact. Now, if the scientific fact agrees with the Bible, it's a scientific truth. And, but anyway, I want you to, I really do want you to talk, if we don't get enough of it today, well, I do want to get into this more deeply maybe tomorrow. Yes, good. On the difference between 
The mind and the brain. The mind and the brain. Very good. That's a really good, that's a good one to get into. I one used to say, I, I used, for a better way to put it, I mean, I, like I said, we, we deal in, as a minister of the gospel and a, yeah. a, and a prophet of God, you, you deal with, with revelation and insight. And then you have to have a way to say it. You know? exactly. So it's concept and precept because I'm not a scientist. Yes. But I would say you are a spirit. You have a soul made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's it. You live in a body. And the brain is the housing of the mind. That's exactly correct. Is, does that? Yes, spirit, soul, and body. So your spirit is your intuition, your conscience, your communion. Your, your, soul, your soul is your intellect, will, emotion. And then your brain and your body, also from three parts, ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm, also three parts, but they simply, your body, a brain and body, brain controlling body, does the will of the soul. The soul does the will of the spirit, and the spirit is led by the spirit of God. So that's what we designed to be you know, led by the Spirit, Holy Spirit to spirit, to soul, to body. So when we don't have that order, no matter what people try and Praise say, the, the brain cannot, a dead brain cannot produce mind. If someone is dead, that brain is just nothing. But if it's in, like now it's in our heads, we're alive. It's the action and the life we see in there is the mind at work. So we can describe the mind on a spiritual and on a physical level because your mind has one foot in the door, which your mind being your soul, being your intellect, will and emotion, has one foot in the door of the spirit, one foot in the door of the body. So whatever we do with our love, power and sound mind is going to impact the physical and is going to impact the spiritual. It's through our mind that we create coherence between them. And integration, God, Jesus said in, is it Second John 3, 3 John 2, I want you healed spirit, soul, and body. I want you prospering so that your soul, your soul must prosper. Our souls need to prosper. Even as your soul as your prospers. Soul, even yeah. as your soul prospers. So your, your mind, if it's not prospering, your body won't prosper, your spirit won't prosper because your mind, it's through our mind we choose to read the, the word. Right. It's through our mind we choose to get into the word. It's through our mind we choose to listen to. Let's go back to our scripture, our, our literal foundation scripture here. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. No. Now, mm. let, me, let me read this. Let me read it literally. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of power and the spirit of love and the spirit of a sound yes. mind. Amen. Now, if you have a mind full of fear, it's not sound. Mm -mm. You may think you have a sound mind. I mean, you know, I mean, ain't nothing wrong with my mind. But if fear is functioning in you, you do not have a sound mind. And it will, it, it will affect, actually affect your brain. It will cause literal brain damage. Now, I, I learned that from Dr. Leaf, and, and I'm, t I'm telling you, you know what we're doing? We're turning over a new leaf here now. We, <laughs> we're learning some stuff here that, right. that, that is good. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> now then, um, on yesterday's broadcast right there at the close, of it, we, we, we were talking about what Jesus revealed when he said, there was a rich man that fared sumptuously all the days of his life. And Lazarus was at his doorstep full of sores and so forth. They both died. Mm -hmm. And Lazarus was carried into the bosom of Abraham and the rich man went into hell. Mm -hmm. Now, he looked up and saw Father Abraham, yeah. recognized him. So he knew more than he did on the earth. Yeah. And his, and, and Abraham said, son, remember when you were on the earth? So his memory was intact. Was still intact. Mm -hmm. So it was not just in his brain because his brain's in a hole up there someplace. Exactly. Disintegrated. Yeah, it, it's Dust. gone. Mm -hmm. But the memory's not gone. So there's a di very distinct separation between the mind and the brain. Yes. That the brain, the mind uses the brain. Yes. 
So if the mind uses the brain, then it can physically change the brain. That's it. And this, this, is, what, this is what I got so excited about because, let, may I get, tell you just here for a second, I, I'm, I, I came here to hear you, you didn't come here to hear me. And I, I'm I want, not hearing you. But, but I feel like you're probably going to tell us anyway. I'm going to tell you anyhow. Okay. So. <laughs> I love hearing you. I'm the one with the gold pen. So I, <laughs> I, I, I noticed when I turned 70 that, uh, now, my mother's family, of whom I take after, yeah. um, all of them that I know anything about, going, going back um, several generations, mm -hmm. that family didn't live through, ex except for my my uh, great grandmother, but she wasn't. She was actually not on that the men's side of that family. Mm -hmm. They all. My mother died at seventy-seven, the age I am right now, and and her her dad. And we go down through the line. Mm -hmm. They were 74, 75, 76, This is where they all died. Well, I noticed that my physical body began to go down. And I'd pray about it, you know, and stand yeah. against the thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to the Lord about it. I, and I said, what, what, what's happening here? I'm, and anyway, he said, your body is trying to follow their DNA, that natural DNA. And I, and I see from studying your work, that you can actually change your yes. DNA, but if everybody does the same thing, family after family after family, they're all going to have the same DNA oh, down exactly. through the years, and it's not just what they inherited from their parents. No. So he said, now, but since you were born again, not of corruptible seed, but by the Word of God which exactly. lives and abides forever, he said, you have my DNA in your spirit. Now, he said, if, if you will take hold of that truth and speak the word of God concerning that, you will change, you, you'll, you'll change, change that, the outcome of that. Now, see, I didn't know yet that, I'm ch that I changed my DNA th through my thoughts and words. Yeah. But I noticed when I did that, my spiritual DNA arrested that. And I'm already ahead of that family. Amen. And I'm, I have committed to God to live on this earth 120 years. The right. days of man should be 120 exactly. years. Exactly. In, in uh, Genesis 6, 3. So now, <laughs> glory. <laughs> the, so the scientific fact that you're actually changing your own physical DNA when you're believing and speaking the kind of thoughts and words that come from God, now do something with that. Okay, so Ecclesiastes 7.29 says, I made them perfect, but they choose to go down their own pathway. So we take that, I made them perfect, virtuous, but they choose to go down their own pathway. Take Deuteronomy 30, 19, I lay before you life and death, yes. blessing and cursing, choose you life, choose. choose life, so that you <clears throat> and your descendants may live. The iniquity of the fathers will reach through to the third and the fourth generation, but we're not responsible for our father's sin. So there's a whole pattern. We have a love, power, and a sound mind. So if I take just those few scriptures and we look at the fact that we're made in God's image, we're made with a love, power, and a sound mind, not a spirit of fear. That's our normal. Our normal natural is that we are made perfect, able to make good choices, designed to be aligned with God, made in His image. So all of our, our spirit is perfect, which we know. Our soul, then God gives us the soul, which is the ability to choose, and then we have this physical body. So the body has to do the bidding of the soul, which has to do the bidding of the Spirit, which is designed to be led by the Spirit of God. Unregener and as you know, if you're not born again, the Spirit is unregenerated. So we've got a soul that is now not being led by anything because the Spirit is unregenerated. So until we are born again, we've got to regenerate our spirit. But if we take man that is unregenerated, we've got a soul and a body. So the soul is still the intellect, will, and the emotion. The soul is our thinking, choosing, 
and feeling and it's reacting to the events and circumstances of life. So man is in life with this ability to react, to think and to choose. We're going to react whether mm -hmm. regardless or that's the design of, our, of, of how God has made us. We're going to respond to the world. We're going to react. Whatever reaction we have changes the DNA and the DNA then expresses and it builds either that which is what our body's wired for. So whether you're born again or not, your body's wired for love because that's the design that God has made. And if we make a wrong choice, we build that. So when we're born again, we then have obviously a regenerated spirit being led by the spirit. So when we make our choices, we now have that ability to guide our choices. So here we are in life and we are facing the events and circumstances of life and we can choose. We have that love, power and sound mind to choose even without the regenerated spirit. As we choose, we cause the DNA to change. Our choices, the signal of our mind is changing the, totally. So as we go to the thoughts that we are thinking now, right at this moment are impacting every single one of the cells of our body. The thoughts that we are thinking now are impacting those that we are in relationship with right now. Although we can't see what's happening in the, non, in the, in the, in the spiritual world and in the, the, the quantum world, which I'll explain in a moment, every thought that we are thinking is impacting our souls plus those that we are in relationship with because we are entangled in each other's lives. Mm -hmm. It's affecting the future generations as well because the thoughts from your father, my, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, your great, all and your mother has come through the sperm and the ova. So whatever thoughts we have as we go through life that we build into our heads basically passes through the sperm and the ova to the next four generations, the next four well, generations. Yeah, it's the it's, next it's four. affecting the cells. It's affecting the cells. It actually gets captured inside. Exactly. It's, it, the cells, 75 to 100 trillion cells in our body are impacted by every single thought that we think. So it's captured as a physical thing. It's passed through the generations and we, I, but it's passed here as the great news. What comes through the generations is zipped up. Can I use this for a moment Certainly. to demonstrate? So here is something from your great-grandmother, great-great-grandmother, great-grandfather, passed through the sperm and the over. Here's a thought wrapped up in, in, in protein. It's wrapped up in protein. It's dormant. It's not going to do anything unless you say, oh, my father died at 77. My grandfather died at 77. That fearful thought is a signal of the mind that goes and unzips, and now we're going to express, your glasses are now becoming someone dying at 77. So it expresses the gene, but if I don't do that, it doesn't. It doesn't happen. If I say now we know now we. I had, you remember Jimmy Hester, mm -hmm. pastored there in Arlington for years and years. Good friend of ours, just wonderful man. Um, we both like to ride motorcycles, and and I walked into a motorcycle shop that I went over to get something, and Jimmy was sitting there at the counter. This was years ago. And he, he was sitting at the, on a stool on a, at the uh, sales counter yeah. there because he'd gotten a call. And, and, he's, and he waved me to come on in. And so and he finished calling. He said, I just got the results of my physical that I just took. He said, and I need to thank your mother. Hmm. I said, what are you talking about, Jim? <laughs> He said, all my, my dad, my brothers, my grandfather, my great grandfather, all died of heart trouble. And he said, my mother told me, she said, now you need to be careful because all the Hester men have heart trouble and, and uh, they, they, they all die young. Now that's a signal that she would have spoken over. So that that literally, if, if you receive that, as a as a as an adult speaking to a child, a child trusts an adult. So you can literally build that. He believed that. into well, That's the thing. You the, he built one of these. Yeah. yeah. So he, he literally activated, He literally that. activated this. Now when <laughs> my mother had a prayer group, always she had a prayer group, and it gets big. You couldn't get around her house, and then then so she'd turn it over to somebody. They'd make a church out of it, and she'd wait a couple <laughs> of years and start over again with ten, and then to do it again. Well, <clears throat> somebody took him over to her prayer group, and this this was years and years and years ago, uh, before, and um, the, and the, and they took Jimmy in there, and for prayer. She said, what, what, what is it? He said, <clears throat> he said, well, and he quoted all that to her. 
She said, what's the truth about that? He said, lady, I just told you the truth. She said, my daddy died of a heart attack. My, my granddaddy died of a heart attack. My great granddaddy died of a heart attack. And the, but the Hester men don't, don't, we don't live very long and I've got heart trouble now. She said, I ask you for the truth about that. He said, lady, I just told you the truth about that. <laughs> he said, Kenna, she boxed my ears. She said, she hit me upside the head like that. She, she literally slapped both of his ears, bang, like this. She said, Isaiah 53, 3, 4, and 5 is the truth about this. He bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases, and by his stripes we are healed. You understand the truth about that? And he said, I just sit there in shock. I said, yeah. She saw death on him. And she spoke over And she had to change it right then. She didn't have time to deal with him. And she, mother, mother walked in strong prayer, and, and she, she walked in the discerning of spirits. She saw it. She saw it. On, and he told me, he said, she boxed my ears, and she changed my thinking in a moment's time. You probably knew what he's talking about when she said she boxed my ears. Whoa, yeah, man. She, 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 she'd, she'd hit you in the head with her hands cupped like that. Oh, boom, whoa. <laughs> Just, oh. Pain is but but she, 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 broke the, she broke through that. She broke through. And see, that's the thing. He had to receive that signal in his mind. He had to receive those words. Yeah. And then he had to make it a It was choice. shielded, wasn't it, uh, up it until was, then? Uh, yes, but he's still... Uh, Exactly. So she spoke that life into him, but he still had to choose to believe her. He could have walked out of there and said, like crazy old lady. Or he, could say, or he could have said, okay, this is actually reality. So the fact that it didn't happen to him means that he took that in. Yeah. He then, the, those, he allowed those words to go to this and destroy this. In other words, this thing was then thrown in the fire. Instead of being opened and expressed, it was physically destroyed. That's the power we have. We can express it and live out of it or we can destroy it. And it's all through our mind. It's all through the, the thoughts that we are thinking. And if we are aligning with God, we're going to speak the correct words. And by yeah, the way, we, he's in his 80s today. Well, there you go. You see, he, <laughs> he destroyed that. It doesn't have to happen. We, we are not bound by Oh, that. Jesus, thank you for your word. That is so good. Isn't that amazing? Oh, man. So we can destroy. So we are not bound by This is the whole thing. It comes through the generations, but it's dormant unless destroyed or activated. So whatever we say and do is first a thought inside of our head. So God gives us this incredible gift of being able to think and choose. We're quite brilliant. We have the ability to process the incoming information from the world outside, cause the DNA to express, and it captures, is captured. And then we live from what we build. So our mind processes, it's captured, and then the physical then generates energy, and that's what we actually speak from. So when we, mm. like now I'm speaking, you speaking, we're not speaking from nothing. We are speaking from physical thoughts made of proteins and, and all kinds of chemical structures inside of our brain that look like trees. If you think of that scripture, Revelations 22.5, the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. So the leaves that we build on our trees are either for healing or destruction. And mm, that's the mm. choice that we have. So we're not bound by the sins of our Father. And we call that epigenetics. It's actually called the science of epigenetics. Epi over and above the genes. The fact that our mind controls genetic expression. Because everything about us being alive, everything about us being alive sitting here today is because our genes are expressing. But genes are just hardware. Like a computer, we can't, this phone is not going to do anything unless I actually make it do something. So my mind is the signal that actually activates the genes. The genes are like just a little computer chip sitting there. They're not going to do anything until you actually switch the computer on and start activating. So your mind is the signal. 75 to 98% well, it's actually th th of illnesses today come from our thought life. In other words, the physical illnesses come from our thought life. What we know from science is that the, that the signal of the mind is up to 98 to 99% of the control that is happening in our body. The other, the other sort of 2 to 5% somewhere around there comes from what we are eating, what we're inhaling, what we're taking through medication, in other words, chemicals. So in other words, the majority of the power of how we function is from now, our thought life. Now, in the natural world, they've got it up like this. They're trying to control everything through with the what they eat, their exercise And program. medication. And, yeah, education. And, medica and, and, and medication, and and med med meds, medications, medicine. Oh, yeah. So taking yeah, chemicals. Once the damage is done. Yeah. And, and then you try to uh, 
control it chemically, but the, the, the chemicals, oh, thank you, Lord, for reminding me of that. I'm praying, oh, God, heal me. Now, then I've got medicine over here that is trying to work. But in my thought life and in my actual words, I keep saying I'm sick. Exactly. I've set up a war between my body and that medicine. And that's called cognitive dissonance in the brain. What? Cog cognitive dissonance. So in other words, what you are thinking is 95 to 99% of the factor. Only what, you, what you're saying and what you're doing is only a 1% of the factor. So in other words, in terms of what is going to actually happen is based on what you are thinking in your non-conscious mind. That's why James 1.21 is so important. The implanted word will save your soul. So when what we plant in our mind is going to be determining what we say. So we can be saying, my God shall meet all my needs. My God shall heal. But what we're thinking is doesn't work for me. I don't really believe the word, but we're saying it because we're supposed so you're to say it. you not saying it with any faith. Mm. Exactly, there's yeah. no faith. And the but faith we're is... We're saying it without the power behind it exactly. to back it up. And the power is the 95%. The anointing that God has placed in and on you to take his word and then take that the revelation of his word and, and then go to science and which reveals the Word of God. When, when science and the Word are together, you don't have just scientific facts, you have scientific truth. Yes. And, and that's, that's, that, that's, that's big. Good. That is really that's big good. today. And, and I'm telling you, this woman's got the, <laughs> she's got the scientific world flipped up over on its ear too because she's particularly in, in some very, very eye-opening theory that the Lord gave her from the Word of God, and she took it into science then and proved it. And I'm a, I, I don't even know how to talk about it. It is so good. <laughs> Amen. And gonna, what was that Brother Hagin used to tell about? And I'm going to let my wife tell you all about <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> <What> was it? <laughs> Amen. Anyway, he didn't know. let's open our Bibles today to Philippians chapter 4. And we're going to begin reading here with the sixth verse. Be careful or, now this is very important for what we're looking at today. That word careful is filled with care or anxious, anxiety. All anxiety is fear-based, not faith-based. Be anxious for nothing, mm -hmm. but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall or will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, if the Word tells us exactly what to think on, that means we have the power of choice, That's we right. can mm -hmm. think on that whether we feel like thinking on it or not. Well, yeah, Brother Copeland, but what difference does it make? Well, let me tell you what difference it makes. If the Word of God says it, then it makes a difference. Now, because what you think gets into your heart that's and that's right. what you begin to say, and what you say is what comes to pass. Now, all of this, now, all of this process, 
which is a spiritual process, has physical effect on the brain. The thought life controls the brain. The brain then, through chemicals, control the physical body. Are you listening to me now? Now, th this is something that is, is, this is medical science knows that the body's got chemicals and all of that, and, and it releases certain chemicals and certain things happen. But what they, what they didn't understand was the effect of the brain. The, the, the brain begins to get damaged by its thoughts, physically damaged by its thoughts. Amen. Now, this as far as I'm going to go with this, because I'm going to turn it over to the girl that knows how it happens, <laughs> why it happens, and what to do about it. Praise God. <laughs> oh, man, this is so good. The, 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 when I read your, the first book of yours I read, and you, you had pictures in there that, that actually showed what was going on on the in, inside of the human brain under the impact of certain thoughts and, and, and then opposite thoughts and so forth, and that they, there's certain thoughts that actually damage the brain. Absolutely. Well, it's so, well, what you've read, that scripture, you know, I've quoted that scripture since I was 18 years old every single day of my life. That scripture that you, amongst others, but that's like me, one of my foundational scriptures because the mind is what's changing the brain, as we say. So we, here's, the, here's the thing. The mind controls the brain. The brain does not control the mind. That's amazing if you think of it. So the mind controls the brain. The brain does not control the mind. So that means our mind is powerful and changes the brain, which means we're not a victim of our biology. Our biology can change. In our, the way God's... And when you say biology, you're talking about your, your actual, your natural DNA, yep, right? Yep, the DNA right yeah. down to the level of subatomic particles on a quantum level, right up to the macro level of our actual body. So right the way, all the way from the small, the tiniest things to the biggest things is all controlled by the way that the mind is functioning. So when we think on these good things, when we do what it's, do not be anxious, and when you do what the Bible says, you're in the zone that you designed for. That's your normal, that's your natural. So when we say things like, I'm not perfect, um, I just made that mistake, you know, I'm not perfect, you know. We actually, that's incorrect because we made perfect in God's image, but we've used our choices incorrectly, mm -hmm. we've used our mind incorrectly. And there's a consequence, which is what Deuteronomy 3019 says. So what we need to do is start like at the beginning, and that is that a thought is a real thing. A thought is the same as a memory. When God says bring all thoughts into captivity to Christ Jesus, he didn't say, well, bring someone Monday and someone Tuesday. He said all thoughts he said all, all day long, everything, yes. Oh, so yeah. we are designed to be aligned with God. And as we talk through these broadcasts, I'll show you how we are actually designed to constantly be in dialogue with God because thoughts are real things that change the physical structure. I I believe that our triune being spiritual body, we're in a physical body because, to help us to actually wake up and realize when we stepped out of alignment with God. Because the minute we make a wrong choice and we step into the fear zone, we actually will feel the physical effects in our body because our DNAs change the way the proteins are forming. So a thought, as you're thinking now, as you're listening to me now, you are literally generating, um, I am speaking a signal, it's going into your brain. I'm gonna show you the first image, it's gonna help people understand this. I'm gonna show you a big picture of inside the brain. And it's a, a picture of us hanging out of our head, literally. Um, so we're gonna see a picture over here. And this is like half of, half of our brain. Fortunately, we don't look like this, but this is our five senses. So our five senses are the contact between the external world and the internal world of our mind. So we are receiving the events and circumstances of life through our five senses. Mm -hmm. They go in as signals, electromagnetic and quantum signals into our brain. Our brain is made up of a hundred structures and there's a very distinct process that the information as it passes through the brain that it moves through those hundred structures. But the brain is just receiving, it's just a receiver. It's a very complex organ. We only understand about two to eight percent of the, of the brain. That's all we understand about the brain. It's hugely complex, but it should be complex because our minds are hugely complex, because our spirit is hugely complex, because you're made in the image of a hugely complex God. So the human brain is very complex, but it's designed to be able to hold the thoughts of the mind. So thoughts are memories. So the information comes in and it's processed in your non-conscious part of your mind, which is the dominant part of our mind, which operates 24 hours a day at 400 billion 
plus actions per second. So right now, your non-conscious mind is working with your conscious mind, which is only a small part of you. Your conscious mind operates when you're awake. So your non-conscious mind is operating 24 hours a day very fast, not bound by space and time, hugely fast, faster than the speed of light, quantum speeds. Your conscious mind is limited to the here and now. It's a very, very small part of mm -hmm. who we are, and it's limited by the present, the past, and the future. But the majority of us is not limited by the present, past, and future, because that's the spiritual part of us, and we're predominantly mm -hmm. spiritual. So when we receive information like you're receiving now, through the signals, my words, through my words, through your, through all your five senses and into your brain, that signal comes in and it activates memories from the non-conscious mind. So then things will pop up, literally pop up from the non-conscious mind, four to five to seven things per any one moment, but they pop up in a sequence. And what pops up from the non-conscious are thoughts that we have implanted over time. We, we've been building thoughts, which are memories, right from when you were conceived. Right from when we were conceived, we were building memories. So all the way through the time in the womb, and every day we're changing those memories. Every time we think, because we are thinking being, we are changing what those trees look like, because those thoughts look like trees. So the information comes in, it's the signal, it moves through the brain, and that signal as it moves through the brain, it impacts the DNA, which is deep down inside the cells of the body, inside the nucleus of the body, just waiting they're dormant, like I used this illustration yesterday, the DNA contains the chromosomes, the nuclear, nucleus which contains the chromosomes, which unwind into the DNA strand, that little ladder, ladder, ladder thing we can show an image uh, to the viewers. And that has got the genetic code. Now, it can't do anything until we think. So what, what you're doing now is the signal that's coming in. You're thinking about my words, which is causing your genes, multiple genes, across your entire body to actually respond to what I'm saying. So genes are expressing. You then, in your brain, the genes are basically making proteins, which are, and so right now, very, very fast, at 400 billion actions per second, you both are building thoughts, and all the viewers are building thoughts, which look like trees, inside their brain, so they're passing through the hundred structures of the brain and you're building thoughts in your brain of this information, which is a temporary memory. It's a temporary memory because it will only last for 24 to 48 hours unless we stabilize it, but we can talk about that in another broadcast. So literally, the signal turns from this mind, the signal comes in and our mind activates that signal, stuff from the non-conscious moves into the conscious to help us understand this incoming information. So for example, right now you're probably thinking of a scripture, of an experience. So as you're hearing my words, it's making you remember things. So we are able to do more than to, to deal with four to seven things at any one time. We are also, while you're listening to me now, you can have a conversation with God, you can hear my words, you can think of the scriptures that are popping up, the, the, the memories from the past, and this whole mind thing is going on at super fast speeds. Then you make a choice. As you make a choice, that's the signal that unzips that DNA, the gene expresses, a protein is formed, and the little memory starts forming. And this is happening, and then branches are growing, and the information is growing. Because each of us is unique, even though we're hearing the same message, each of us is building our own designer tree, our own designer thought. Now, the thoughts look like trees, and if I show you this image over here, this is, these are actual th trees inside the brain. These are actual neurons, memories inside the brain. Thoughts, thoughts are memories. That's what they look like. This is, you can see the tree-like structure. So those like are the tree trunks and those are the little branches. So as you are thinking and learning new information, memorizing the word, hearing what I'm saying, you're growing little branches to hold that information. Mm -hmm. Now you can grow an unlimited amount of branches. We grow one branch per concept. The branches all connect to each other. So that's why they're very dense and very big. We've got three million plus years of space in our brain. We, we can grow, we, we, we are deeply intellectual. We can, the more we think, the more branches we grow, the more intelligent we now become. Now, why don't you back up and re-say that because that, that impacted me uh, when I read that in your book, that we have brain capacity it is beyond for what three, three million three years plus years that's the plus. estimate that's just the estimate of people that aren't even christians and if you think of what the scriptures say to see now is just the poor reflection to see, you know, to see him face to face obviously if you think of it um kenneth and glory he has designed us with in his image he's brilliant so we're yes. brilliant so he's given us this brilliance in our brain because if you look at the numbers, and I'll tell you a few of the numbers as we're going along, we have 75 to 100 trillion cells in our body. 
100 billion of um, those cells are in the, well, form 20% of brain tissue. The other 80% of brain tissue is also different types of cells, but the 20% of brain tissue, which is 100 billion of the 75 to 100 trillion cells in the human body, are where the memories are formed. So we form our memories on these nerve networks inside the brain, which are, are 100 billion of them. Now, each nerve net, each of those 100 billion nerves or neurons can grow a limitless amount of information. So the more you think, the more branches you grow, there's just no limit to our capacity. So we, we are are, we, we, the, we can grow and grow and as we are changing our brain this is called neuroplasticity neuro meaning brain plastic meaning to change so we are designed to literally constantly moment by moment of every day as we are thinking we are adding more branches changing branches redesigning the landscape of our brain this is the power God has given us we are not the same now as we were five minutes ago because of our discussion because of the information we have received we have redesigned our brain certain memories have come from the non-conscious to the conscious we building a new memory, we're redesigning those old ones that have been popping up. So there's already been in just in just a, a, a one minute, a 60 second time frame, there would have been changes in about seven, 60 times, like nearly, four, nearly 300, 300 odd changes inside of our brain. Yeah, and, and that's a minimal amount that would have happened. So we're constantly redesigning. So thoughts are real things. Now we're designed to think only good thoughts. This Philippians 4.8, that's, yeah, that's, that's our design. Think on these things. And then in seven to Ecclesiastes 7.29, which is the quote, scripture I quoted in one of the other broadcasts, he made us virtuous, he made us perfect, but we choose to go our own pathway. So our design is to do beautiful trees, healthy trees. That's why I use the analogy of the green. We're designed to sit to, to say to God, okay, this is the event and circumstance coming at me. I can't control that, but God, you know the answer. I mean, he's done it all. He has every solution, everything, every healing. He, we, we were healed. Everything that we need for our life has already been done. It's over there in the pool of probabilities of God's love. It's done. What we have to do is align ourselves with God to hear what we're supposed to be doing to activate what he's already done. So we have to get our mind right to activate what he's already done. But the enemy tells us, hey, make up your own mind, choose your own things. You know, so we start listening to this side instead of listening, aligning with God, because mm -hmm. we're designed mm -hmm. to align with God. We're designed to be addicted to God. Addiction's not a negative thing. Addiction's only negative when it's in this zone. We are designed to constantly be communicating and absorbed and stimulated and led by the Spirit of God. That's that's an addiction. They use addiction in the negative sense. We think of the word addiction and we think, you know, alcohol and drugs and cocaine and but that's that's when addiction has gone wrong. You no, know, the scripture says we're addicted to doing good. Exactly. Yeah. We're addicted to God. We're addicted to doing good. We are mm -hmm. addicted for the good. There are no negative pathways in our brain. We have to wire them in. We have to learn how to do those. So we actually have to learn how to build toxic thoughts. So every time we make a, a, a toxic choice, a, a negative choice, the wrong choice, when we don't listen to God, then those proteins, as I mentioned earlier on, will fold incorrectly and we get these distorted versions of the truth. So here's another image of inside the brain and this would be considered healthy thoughts so if you look over here like look like this one over here there's a lot more branches on this one than there are over there which means that there's more thinking that's happened over there that's a bigger memory because there's more branches now you can grow as many branches as you want on your thoughts the more you think the more branches you grow there's no limit there's no cap there's mm. you, you it's you could just we don't live three million years on this earth but you've got that amount of space in your brain so we can just grow and grow and grow and grow and grow now that's that's healthy when we've made good choices, but when we make bad choices, we literally disrupt what it looks like inside of the brain. So we create, now I've used a bit of artistic license, but we, there's, there's not a black hole, there's actually a toxic thought there, but it's, it's, it's wiry, it's distorted, the proteins are folded incorrectly. Now the minute that, if you cut your finger, okay, we cut our finger, the minute we cut our finger, our liver will, will secrete what we call C-reactive proteins, our immune system will secrete other kinds of immune factors, and it will go to the site of damage, and over a period of 21 days, healing will take place. But those things that have been secreted, those little immune factors, go to the site of damage and create a little tent of inflammation so that healing can take place. This is what God's designed in our body. Now, that when oh, that's a physical injury or a virus. When we have a toxic thought, our body does the same thing. So our immune system recognizes a toxic thought, a wrong choice, in the same way as it recognizes a virus or a physical wound. Mm -hmm. So it also sends well, a, out... A, a, 
So it would be a fear-based thought. A fear-based thought. This is fear zone. Mm -hmm. This is love zone. Mm -hmm. So if I choose to be negative or I choose to have a, a, an anxious thought or I choose to get irritated, it would do the same thing in, in my brain and my body as if I cut my finger physically and I had blood pouring out. I would have the same reaction. So your body recognizes that as an invasion, like a viral invasion. So it builds inflammation in that area because it's all distorted. The proteins are folded incorrectly. The electromagnetic balance is off. The quantum balance is off. It looks different. It disturbs everything around it. That's why I've created, a, the, we, we showed this, try to show this with a black cloud effect. It creates like this black cloud effect on an fMRI machine or a spec scan, which are is, which is technology that, that basically is a bird's eye view. It doesn't look at thoughts. No, as the Bible says, no one except God and us ourselves can read our thoughts. So no machines can ever read our thoughts. But what they can show us is that there is activity going on in the brain. And this would show us healthy activity in the brain. And this would show unhealthy activity in the brain. So when someone is thinking a toxic thought, that area becomes damaged. If you don't deal with it, if you don't forgive, if you don't get rid of it, it disrupts all the natural blood flow, glucose metabolism, electromagnetic balance mm -hmm. and that's what the machines will pick up that's what an fMRI machine and a spec scan will pick up the damage inside that area mm -hmm. of the brain now the good news is that that's not your destiny you're not a victim of your biology if that's where you are that's what you can become renewing the mind changes yes, that right. into that my, my, my. I this came up in my spirit from the 112th Psalm this blessed is the man that fears the Lord and delights greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. Now you come down here. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. Now, the impact of, I'm seeing the signal, we're out of time. <laughs> oh, did you just have to do that? <laughs> yes, it is. Let me finish the, my statement here. Uh, and this, this uh, as the Lord leads, we'll, we'll take it up tomorrow on this. The impact of sudden bad news yeah. is just horrendous. Yes. But it doesn't have to stay that way, no. and you don't have to accept it. No, do you? you don't have to at all. What happens when you hear bad news? You go dark. Your mind goes dark. You think that bad stuff, and it, you have to dump it. You have to get rid of it. Yeah, exactly. and the, the first, the first guard against Marks that, the light. first guard against it, of course, is to be strong in That's the word right. and the power have of it his mind. A man, a yeah. strong spirit of a man, will sustain him through bodily mm -hmm. times of trouble right. and bodily pain. So. His, his mind is strong. He's, he, the blessing of the Lord is up and round about him. He's, he, he's protected. He doesn't, he doesn't fall for that. Now, the first thing that comes up is the power of forgiveness. Mm. You better immediately go into forgiving mode instead of letting some bad news stir you up exactly. and you start getting mad to somebody else. And I, we, I, I want... Jesus said to, to prove that the Son of Man hath power on the earth to forgive sin, he said to the man, rise and take up your bed and go home. So the power to forgive and the power to heal are exactly the same power. Exactly. And uh, whew, we need to go there tomorrow. This is an exciting time. Yes. I'm, I, I en enjoy... Um, I've, I've, all my life, I've been mechanically, my, I like mechanical stuff. Yes. I like cars and airplanes, motorcycles, and, and uh, man, I was born to fly. <laughs> I, I just, I really was. I, You're born and, to fly. <laughs> but, but I like knowing what's going on out there. I, I like more, I like to know more about an engine than it just makes noise, you know, yeah, or, yeah. or power. We know the detail. I'd, I'd, like, I'd like to have, I'd like to have, um, um, oh, there's a word I'm looking for. The functioning knowledge about what's happening. Yeah. And uh, that, that's not quite what I was looking for, but... Uh, working knowledge. Working knowledge. That's the word. Thank you, Gloria. 
the, the working knowledge. For instance, you know how to buy a ticket and get on an airplane and go somewhere. Mm -hmm. I know how to fly the airplane over there. Mm -hmm. So there, there's, a, there's a level a of understanding there. Yes. Well, the, the scripture says, comprehending with all the saints, mm. the length, the breadth, the height, and the depth, and to know intimately the love of the anointed one. So that's, that's working knowledge it's of working God. Knowledge. Yeah. We are supposed to know, man, yes. and I, I really <laughs> enjoy <God>. this. <laughs> to get inside that brain and find out what, what that thought does to it, what that word does to it, then what this thought does to it, and what that thought yeah. does to it. It's amazing. Amen. Now, I want to get back over there where we were yesterday, but I want, I want to get there through this scripture in the book of Colossians. We can turn there in Colossians chapter 3. Now, I want... I want you in the, in, the, in the television audience, you in the radio audience, you, you hear this, but I want, you to, I, I want you to get your Bible. I want you to put it in your eyes. I want it going in your eyes. I want it going in your ears. And then I want it coming out your mouth. Okay? Now, let's Colossians chapter 3, and we'll look at verse 15. Let the peace of God rule in your heart to the which also you are called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of the anointed one dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with, the, with grace in your heart to the Lord. Now, let the peace of God rule. Jesus gave us his peace. It's in there. Totally. In your spirit. It's part of the fruit of the mm -hmm. spirit. Mm -hmm. The word is the seed to it, mm -hmm. and it's in there. And by faith, you can, you can bring it, uh, you, can, you can bring it into operation, into action. It is part of the blessing of the Lord. It's part of the blessing wall mm -hmm. that by faith, can be built up and should be built up around you and me and any, every other born again child of God on the face of the earth. Amen. You remember how, how hacked Satan got at Job and he said to God, there's a wall around him. And it was the blessing wall. He said, you blessed him. You blessed all that he had. But fear opened the door and allowed the devil to get through that wall. Mm. And it hasn't changed. Mm -mm. It is exactly the same today. Exactly. Now, when we closed yesterday, we were talking about the 112th Psalm. The man with the fixed heart and the established heart is not afraid of evil tidings. Exactly. So. How do we get there? How did he get there? Okay, so we have a concept in science called super position. So what that means is that super, super, super position. position. So we made in the image of God, which we keep on saying, we're brilliant, we are wired for love, we learn fear. Okay, so fear is not a normal response, it's a learned response. Okay, so what happens is that as every, as we're going through life, we are experiencing the events and circumstances of life, as I was explaining in the previous broadcast. I'm picking up at the end of that broadcast and moving into this broadcast in terms of superposition. So here I am about to make a choice. So if you think of a wave, you know how a surfer on a wave, that's often the analogy, and we can show a picture of a surfer on a wave. Think of them as they, they, they kind of ride that wave and that wave is up there and before that wave crashes, they're going to go along that wave. Now imagine a surfer on the top of a wave and in that position over there, he's either going to go this way with his surfboard or he's going to go that way with his surfboard. Imagine that this is superposition up here on top of this. I can choose to go that way, which is God's way, or I now, can choose now, to go that way. Remind them, remind them again. This the, is the love zone. The, so the green tree represents the, green the healthy tree is the love side. 
and the toxic tree represents the fear zone. Now, th that little wiry bush right there actually looks like those trees. In the brain. In the brain. Yep, it? that's it. So when we've made, so thoughts are real and they occupy mental real estate. Like this studio occupies mm. real estate. A thought is occupying real estate. So when this is occupying, when we've made a bad choice, we've actually literally built a stronghold that occupies real estate into our brain. And this is a distorted toxic one and it's causing the whole brain to go into inflammation and every thought impacts every cell of your body. So this thought has changed your brain chemistry and has changed the environment around every single cell in your body, which is quite a, quite a shocking thought when, you think, when mm. you think of that, when you think of the impact of a toxic thought, we wouldn't think another toxic thought because this then is putting us into the, the vulnerability zone for, for illness. It's this that increases our chance of getting an illness 75 to 98%. So illness doesn't come from God, illness comes from the destruction that we've created through the entrance of sin, right back from Adam and Eve, as we know, so it's everything going wrong. Okay, so when we, a moment by moment of every day, God gives us the chance in superposition to make the right choice. Every 60, more or less, every 63 days, we are rewiring the networks in our brain through superposition. So superposition is when something happens to us, we are in a, a unique position where we are able to look at God's way or the enemy's way. So we can choose, I'm either going to follow a line with God and I'm going to believe what God said he has done. So you're sitting, you're sitting up here. In this, on the, on the and way. And God, we're, we're back to Deuteronomy. Uh, 3019. 3019 again. Choices. Love We're sitting up here and God said, I'm placing before you life and, and death, death. Yep. blessing and, and cursing. cursing. Choose. Therefore, you, you choose. choose. Exactly. You it's choose. He's made his decision. And it's already done. Life is his decision exactly. and he's chosen and you. He's, exactly. And he's already given us every, that decision you're about to made, make, the, the answer's already there in this side, in the life side. God's already given us the solution. That's the, the reason answer. first words are so important. Yes. In, in the face of a disaster. Yes. Or bad news. Yes. Oh. As implanted a man thinks, thinks in, his, in his heart, so, so is, is he. he. James 13 through. So it sorry. starts with our thoughts. Starts with our thoughts. So when we, in the, and, and God gives us this, you're so totally correct, Gloria, because when God, when, in, when we in superposition, we have this unique, powerful mind that enables us to actually see the correct way or the wrong way. Mm -hmm. We all know we have this checking mm -hmm. station. We, we, the Holy Spirit, is, if we, if we are tuning into the intuition of the Holy Spirit. I'm th this, that, that has really struck me. Super position. Yep. Where wisdom resides. Where we are part of the supernatural. Exactly. That we're, we're higher than, we're not just natural beings. We're not, well, I'm only human. No, you're not if you're born again. You are. You're like Jesus. You exactly. are, you are spirit and God and you are, you are human, but you're a superhuman. Exactly. You're a God human and you're, you're sitting here super, you're a supernatural born again child of God sitting on this, this precipice with the, the God right of choice and you're in super position. Whew, I liked it. And it's a, it's a scientific fact that if, <clears throat> sorry, 40 times every second, we are actually in our non-conscious mind, which is the bigger part of us. We are, we've got these waves of decision-making that are happening, that these like waves that are building and crashing, but we experience superposition every more or less two to seven seconds. So every two to seven seconds, we are literally in the situation where we can switch off to the external, switch onto the internal and say, Holy Spirit, what should I do? Because the Holy Spirit will lead us unto all truth. We can mm -hmm. sit back, analyze our frontal lobe of our brain is designed to enable us to be able to stand back and have a multiple perspective advantage. In superposition, you have a multiple perspective advantage. If I go that way, I could land in the mouth of jaws. I'm on, I'm on the surfboard. If I go that way, I'll get away from jaws. I'll go into God's arms and activate. So we've, we, we, we're able to do that. We, that's our love, power, and our sound mind. So if we are aligned with God, if we have implanted the Word of God, then that's what's going to save our soul. That's where the wisdom will come from. We're going to look at it through God's eyes. But if we've spent hours and hours on TV, gossip, Google, and everything else except God, 
that's what's going to inform our mind. Because James, as you know, James 1, 13 through 15 talks about, I'm just going to paraphrase it, the fact that when we give, um, when we give, it, when an evil desire, um, when we give uh, attention to an evil desire, it grows and it grows into mm -hmm. sin. And as the sin grows, it brings forth death. Now that's exactly what this does. What we have found from science is that if I grow one of these and I keep growing it, whatever I think about the most will grow. Where my mind goes, my brain will follow. So as this thing grows and gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it's gonna put me into sickness zone because the bigger that gets, the more inflammation, the more disease, the more breakdown, the more neurodegeneration, the more cardiovascular, stroke, brain, whatever, cancer, all of these things, 98% of cancer comes from the brain. That's what, from the, from the mind. This is what research is 98%. showing. 98% of cancer core is coming from how we are managing our thought life. You see, what God says is that choose life. So he, we can't control the events those, and circumstances. Those mutant cells. <clears throat> mutant cells, yeah, are coming from our thought life. They're coming from just, this is a mutant cell. And, and enough mutant cells eventually over time start breaking down at a, at a very micro level, breaks down like these little tubules inside the brain and they start disintegrating and we start manifesting with disease. So if we have enough negative reactions and unforgiveness and bitterness, we, the more we keep that, the more inflammation, the more breakdown, the more vulnerability to il illness. Then we turn around and say, God, why? Meanwhile, we didn't take responsibility for our thought life. I mean, you read the scripture, Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, 20 through 22 pay attention to my words incline that ear into my saying keep it in the midst of your heart you know if we are in superposition and we've taken the time to implant the word of God when we're in superposition what's going to pop up do you remember in the last broadcast I spoke about as information comes in things pop from the non-conscious to the conscious mind well when I'm in superposition and I'm dealing with an event or circumstance and I have to make a choice I'm either going to have toxicity popping up and that's going to inform my decision or I'm going to have positive God stuff popping up and that's going to inform my decision. And then I'm in superposition and I can either choose to listen to God stuff or I can choose to listen to the enemy because there are only two, it's either the enemy or God, there is no gray zone. And you're going to listen to one of them, we're going to be informed by one of them. And then what we do is we take that from superposition and we collapse what was a probability. A probability hasn't, is in, in the enemy's world over here in the fear zone, it's an illusion. It hasn't yet happened. It's a lie. The enemy has no power, as we know. So he can only lie. So it's an illusion. He needs us to take his lie and turn it into into something in our head and make DNA express it. and build. Yeah. So we, he wants us to create the evil. So he gives us the lie. God already has all the solutions. So God's probabilities are all already done. They achieve, they finish, it's a finished work. Everything we ever need is there. So in superposition, we can either choose the good finished work or we can create evil. That's what we're pretty much doing. So when we create sure. evil, this is evil. This is the sin. This is the stronghold of the enemy. This is the, even the little thing of being irritated to the big thing of murder or whatever. It's all sin. It's all a probability that we've collapsed in the wrong direction when we were in superposition because we chose not to be aligned with God. We chose not to be led by the Spirit of God. So our intuition in our spirit man is where the Holy Spirit speaks to us, as we know. And if we need to use our mind to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying, but that's a choice. And if our mind is so clogged up with all the wrong thinking and gossip and reading, watching TV and, you know, filling it up with all the nonsense, instead of balancing it with filling it up with the word of God, mm -hmm. it's the implanted word of God that saves our soul, not the implanted word of Google and gossip and whatever out there, mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. so, and that's where we, we've got to decide how we are spending our time. Where are we directing our attention? And that's what I love about Proverbs. You know, you did that whole teaching on Proverbs. You've got that incredible book, Gloria, that you did on Proverbs right, a few so. years ago. I love that book. Um, but Proverbs 20 through 22 is teaching us the principles that when you're in superposition, if you incline your ear, if you look at what you've put in the midst of your heart, if you've spent that time and chosen to do that, that's what's going to pop up. That's how you're going to sure. view the current situation. We can't control the events and circumstances of life because the events and circumstances of life are the result of other people's choices. But we can control our reaction to the events and circumstances of life. And in superposition, that's what we're designed to do. So when we move into God's side, that's when the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our mind in Christ Jesus. But when we make the wrong decision, enemy's side, we don't have the peace of God and we don't have it protecting our mind. So our mind goes into chaos and disorder and, dis and disorder will manifest. Mental ill health will manifest versus mental health. So the love zone is mental health. 
mental ill health comes from the fear zone and it's all through choices and this is where I think of such a passion to make people realize that we can't blame our biology we can't blame our parents we can't blame our circumstances those are that's life that's the nature nurture debate and blaming you that's 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 part of other people's decisions but we are in this unique superposition state where we can say okay God I don't like this but can you help me control my reaction so that I can rejoice despite the circumstance so that when I am getting that bad news and you get that phone call and you hear that that whatever happens and remember when Lindsay you that Lindsay your, your granddaughter when she was sick and you you guys didn't didn't react negatively you immediately started praying right. the word over mm -hmm. her you yes. were in superposition you could have gone and heard all the negative and gone down the hole but you didn't you proclaimed the word you chose to align you chose to activate the the probability now, when, when of that, healing when Kelly her mother yeah was standing there and they they didn't expect Lindsay to live through the night no the doctors had really said she's dead they'd already given that proclamation yeah. But the but Kelly, from we we had no fear in our household. We didn't teach them fear at all, and uh, <clears throat> we would do certain things that other people just cringe at. But we believe God. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the moment she heard that news, I mean, the moment she heard it, she turned to Terry, and she said. I refuse to fear. Amen. That's right. See, superposition, she collapsed in the she, right yeah. direction. She told me, she said, Daddy, that thing, she said it was dark and it was black and it was a heavy pressure on me. But she said, I was amazed at how weak it was. She said, when I said I refuse to fear, she said, Poof. That it thing just away. went, said it just, it just like a bird flying out the window, it was gone. You see she that? made her choice and Let she refused to fear. Believe that. That's the thing because that, what that darkness, which is the lie of the enemy, it's not real. It's an illusion because it can't, it's not, it hasn't happened because the truth is, is that the healing is there. It's already done. And that's what, I don't think we're getting that as Christians. I don't think we really get the fact that everything that we need for everything in our life has already been it's done. It's already been. We have to, in our superposition, activate, and then we can rejoice despite the circumstances. Activate. That's a good word yeah. for it. Step in like the, the, at the pool of Bethesda. You can sit back and everyone's walking past me, or you can get in that water and activate the healing. And in that place, you can either activate the fear or you exactly. can activate faith. Exactly. You can connect. And you have to know about faith to activate it. Exactly. So and, you're back, and you're back to first words. Yep. That's Jesus right. said, Why take ye the thought saying? <clears throat> that's so good. Mm -hmm. So that's the way Why you take it. Because you do, you take what it. Because the minute you take that thought, the minute you're in superposition and you take that thought, you've activated DNA. You've caused genetic expression. You've, you've put it built, in the action. You've made proteins. You've grown one of these. And that's, and then if the more you think about it, the more it will grow. And then this is what you will speak and do. This will become your new reality. This becomes the faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. We have faith in the wrong direction. Yeah. But it could be. Well, there. that's what fear is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Fear is twisted faith. Exactly. Um, f fear of a dangerous animal, for instance, is faith in that animal's ability to hurt you. Exactly. But the, the, it's, it, the spiritual force of faith in Adam was twisted mm. and became the force of fear. And she now, still chose. They chose. Uh, they chose. Yeah, they made the choice. Yeah. And, and, what, and when they did, it separated them from God. Exactly. So that spiritual force of faith separated from God exactly. became fear because he, he was instantly connected to exactly. Satan, instantly. who is a spirit The minute being. we go there, we instantly, it's so simple if we see it like yeah. that. I always show when I teach this, and we can show this on the screen, I show this person on a, on a surfboard, and in, in, the wave, in the wave there's this murky water, and the shark is there, and then I show a picture of an actual shark. And so that's what, I mean, that's literally what the enemy is waiting just to get you. But we can get out of that. We don't have to go there. Well, Jesus said to sow ourselves a word. Satan comes immediately. He does. To steal it. Yep. All he's after to steal is the word. He's not out to steal your car. He's not out to steal your family. He's out to steal the word. Exactly. If he can get the word, he's got your car. 
and your family. It's got everything. And that stealing is something I'd love to talk about on a broadcast in terms of the timing, how, he, how the timing gets us, how we get caught without even realising, because we don't recognise the time of the stealing. It's a very interesting concept. She and I have been married uh, over 52 years. It's amazing. The 53 years in April of uh, 2015. That is amazing. I, you know, I wouldn't lie right on my own broadcast. And, and, and Don't tell you. Yeah. Recording. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do not remember the last argument we had. It's just amazing. Now, it's, it's her fault. Because <laughs> I, I mean, whatever the last argument was, I did it. <laughs> I caused it. She would oh. never, ever, she just wouldn't react. engage in it. And and she taught me, so and good. and she taught me how to how to, how to live uh, in superposition. Yeah, she, and that she way. she oh. laid her yes. hands on me one day, and she said, "I find no fault in you." It's so beautiful. And it just it just revolutionized my whole life, and so I am eternally grateful oh. for the the wife that I have. Well, Mac and I always base our relationship on your example. We always say, Kenneth and Gloria do this, Kenneth and Gloria do that. <laughs> so you're very much in our lives. So we're very Praise grateful God. to you too. That blesses me. That does. I, I just, I really appreciate it. For years that. we've been doing that. So. Amen. Glory to God. Well, Ken and I have been married how long? 52, 52 years? 52, be incredible. 53 years in April of 2015. I never did run home to mama either. Not one I? time. <laughs> Didn't even talk about it. No. Oh. it amen. Isn't that wonderful? The word of the Lord came to me back, and we'd been married. We'd been married four and a half years before before I went to uh, ORU. And the word of the Lord came to me there, and He said, "She's precious to me. I have given her to you." And here's here's the reason I brought this up. She is to you what temper is to steel. Wow. You take uh, steel before it's tempered is brittle. Yes. You take a, a, a screwdriver, for instance, and you, uh, before it's put in the oil and you run the, the temper colors on it and so yes. forth, it's brittle. You can bring it, break it so easy. And um, they, the love of God in people is supposed to strengthen one another mm. like that. Mm. And and it's it, the two of you become stronger and strength, far stronger than one of you can be by yourself. So now, the thing that I'm thinking about here so. is it is so vitally important mm. that both of you think love thoughts mm -hmm. and mm. faith thoughts, mm. even if there's something Going on. Going on between you. No, 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 no. You put up a solid front against it. We may have different ideas, but we're not going to have this words. That's we so are going to stand in the love of God. We're going to stand in the Word of God. And she had to teach that to me. So good. And it, it's, it's, good it's, advice. Ah, it's a marvelous thing. Oh. Let's open our Bibles today to the book of James, please. It is true that opposites attract and then they get married. <laughs> That's well, there's a reason for that, though, when you think about it. Um, if you were both the same, one of you wouldn't be any stronger than the other one. That's right. But when one of you has strengths here and the other one has strengths here, this is the benefit of covenant. This is what covenant's all about. You can put up a solid front. Now, I learned this. The, the, the Lord taught, taught me this years ago. This is the basis of racism. That's very good. The spirit of division. Mm -hmm. That the spirit of division will magnify a difference in hate. So if there's two wow. different colors mm -hmm. or two different genders mm -hmm. or uh, the, it's not just color. There's, there's the... All the isms. It's mm -hmm. all... all all of it. There's the female race and the male mm -hmm. race and the and, and all of that. Reason. And he'll take a difference and he'll magnify it. Hate. Mm. He makes it a value judgment yes. instead of being excellent way to say it. Yeah. yeah. And it's not a value judgment, now, it's a strength. In covenant, 
however. Mm-hmm. You, you, the, the Spirit of God magnifies a difference in love and the, you strengthen one another with that difference. So good. So when a, uh, a black man and a brown man and a red man, a yellow man, a white man, when they all get together, all of us see things from a different perspective. perspective. You but you get us all together and Creflo Dollar said, I don't understand yeah. why the white man claps on one, two, three, four. And the black man claps on one, two, three, four. He said, I don't understand that, but together we don't miss a beat. Oh, that is so <laughs> Isn't that good? good. But, but, but the truth of that yeah. is this. We're going, we're going to see it right here. Yeah. In, uh, in the third chapter of the book of James, verse 14, if you have bitter envying and strife in your heart, mm-hmm. glory not and lie not, against the truth or the Word of God. Keep your mouth shut. Don't Mm. say anything. Mm, That's so good. Mm. This wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly, it is sensual, Mm. it is devilish. For where there is envy and strife, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom, now in Luke eleven forty nine, 49, Jesus called the written word, the wisdom of God. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. It is peaceable. It is gentle. It is easy to be entreated. Talking about the word of God. It's full of mercy and good fruit. It is without partiality and it is without hypocrisy. I can take the word of God. I can say I'm healed when, when every symptom in me is saying I'm sick and I'm not a hypocrite for saying it. No, However, on the other hand, I'm a born again believer and the word of God said by his stripes you were healed and I say I'm sick. That's hypocritical. That's saying you believe the word and you don't. Well, yeah. what, I, what I believe the Lord has uh, led us in here to, to deal with today is strife, stress, mm. bitterness, unforgiveness. Mm. They, Jesus said to prove that the Son of God hath power on the earth to forgive sins. He mm. said to the sick of the palsy, rise, take up your bed and go home. Mm. The same spiritual force of God that heals the the supernatural power of faith and the supernatural power of God, the anointing of God that removes burdens and destroys yokes is exactly the same power that removes sin, forgives sin. Forgiveness removes it. Mm -hmm. So we have the God-given power to forgive. That's right. That's been invested in us by the power of God. Mm. Now, what I'm what I'm hearing and learning from you, the the toxins of the brain were not supposed to be there in the first no. place. And they're they're literal, they're literal, they're literal toxins. They're, they're not just bad ideas. They're 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 chemical it's forces that are eating away at the brain itself. Well, it's actually the good stuff in the wrong quantities. So it's all the good stuff gone wrong. It's distortions, the confusion. The very scripture that you've read, that's what, that's what this does. The toxic, toxic thinking creates complete confusion. So we, for example, cortisol is, a, is, is very important. You die without cortisol. But if cortisol flows in the wrong quantities, it becomes like battery acid and literally starts destroying brain cells. So the, we, we don't actually create negative um, sub- substance. We, dist- we, we, ha- we take what's there and we distort it. So it's all incorrect proportions, incorrect amounts, distorted proteins folded incorrectly. So it's all confusion, which is exactly what the scriptures say. So when we do the wrong thing, we manifest physically with exactly the same pattern inside of our brain. And that then creates that illness in our body. So I mean, the scriptures are so perfect for that. So if we react incorrectly. We uh, stress 
stress, for example, stress we all think is a bad thing, but stress is actually an amazing thing. It helps us to be focused and clear. Stress is when your body literally goes in, where your heart starts pumping faster, your blood vessels around your heart dilate, which means that you have more blood flow, you have more oxygen pumping to your brain. It's a state where you're focused, where you're cognitively alert, and where you can rejoice despite the circumstances, where you can tune into the Holy Spirit. That's if we're reacting correctly. But if we react, react incorrectly, we take all those same things that, and I've just explained too, um, the, the heart and the, and the oxygen in the brain, we actually, if we react incorrectly, then we change the whole pattern. So instead of the heart pumping correctly, instead of the blood vessels dilating, they constrict which then puts you at risk for a heart attack. Um, you don't have enough oxygen pumping to your mm. brain, which puts you at risk for a stroke. The, the, blood, the lack of blood flow also at risk for a stroke in your brain. In other words, when we, the way we react to the events and circumstances will push us into the good stuff, if it's the good thing, good stress, or stress, which is a good thing, can be distorted if we react incorrectly. So in Deuteronomy 3019, when we choose incorrectly, we go into negative stress. So stage, we, we call it, we call stage one a stress healthy and good and positive. And we call negative stress stage two and stage three of stress, stress which mm -hmm. is, sta yeah. and stage two and three is just a distortion of the truth. And what they found from science is that if you react, and this is fascinating, if you react incorrectly, if we react incorrectly to, to an event or circumstance, and push ourselves into negative stress, we actually increase our chance of dying by 43% in the next 12 months. Mm. Isn't that amazing? Say think that about, again. Think so, about so. if you, when you walk in love and you forgive, you, you miss all that stress, you're gonna live longer. Well, yeah. Exactly, you stay, in the, you stay completely in the positive zone. So yeah. everything is doing what it should Somebody be doing. Somebody you think did you wrong, you say, Lord, I forgive them, I pray for them, help them. You go well, free. I am totally convinced that that's why Jesus made it a commandment. To, to forgive. It's not yeah. just your church. It is not optional. Yeah, it is right. a commandment. It's a commandment. Right. Forgive. To, and think about what he said. In, he said, don't let corrupt communication come out of your mouth. mouth. Mm -hmm. But what? Forgiving one another even as God forgave yeah. you for Christ's sake. Now, at first, that just looks like that's for Jesus' sake. But you have to remember, Christ is not his last name. That, that word Christ there is referring to the anointing. Ah. The, the word Christ the is the, 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 mm. the Greek uh, translation of the word Messiah. And it means the anointing, or it's referring to the anointed, which is Jesus, of course. Well, of course, you can't separate them. But in this case, it was talking about this for the sake, we're the body of Christ. We are the body of that anointing. We are supposed to be walking in a state of power exactly. and healing and deliverance exactly. all the time. Exactly. So that's our normal. That's normal. That's We're the body of the anointing. It, it's in there and it's supposed to be flowing. Yeah. Amen. Totally so unforgiveness cuts shows. it off. It totally does because if you look in that Mark 11, to, uh, Mark 11, 20 through 23, speak to the mountain and it'll be cast into the sea, but go and forgive first. You know, you can ask whatever you ask of your father, it shall be done, but forgive. So that's also just in addition to what you're saying. So if we're going to deal with the mountains in our lives, we have to have forgiveness. And what, what science shows so nicely about about this whole thing of why we need to forgive, why it's good for us to forgive, is that if someone's hurt us, we've then received some kind of toxicity and whatever we've got this, you know, we've got the, what they did to us. If we've built, we've built it into our minds, that's wired in, it's part of us, it's affecting us. So that means that there's an open doorway for whatever that person or persons did. They can connect with you. Through quantum physics, we know that there's now, there's a connection that's been set up and created because this physical, this physical thing exists in your head. So wherever th that person that did that to you, it's connected to that. So whatever curse they speak over you, whatever negative things they speak over you, a curse with a cause you with a light. You open the door to it. Exactly, a curse without a mm -hmm. cause. If I forgive, I get this out of my 
head. I give that to God. It's out of my head. It's sorry, I nearly threw that at you, Gloria. Um, it, it's out of my head. It's in God's hands. And I've then I can activate Second Thessalonians one six, which says He will repay with retribution those who trouble you. But the big thing is we've kept our account with God clear. We've eliminated that from our head. We've forgiven. We've released. We've got it out. We've literally taken that out of our head and broken that connection between those people and put them in God's hands. So if we keep that in our head, we are vulnerable to. Um, no matter what, even if we're the victim. So, you know, there's sin, which is voluntary. There's trauma, which is involuntary. So if you were trafficked or beaten or something terrible happened to you, you didn't ask for that. Um, but it's going to look the same in the brain. So we have to still forgive. If people speak about you, you didn't ask for that. People speak bad things or whatever. You didn't, but that's trauma. But we still have to forgive because otherwise we connected to those people. We connected to that situation. And that then puts our body in that vulnerable state for illness. It affects our mind and affects our spiritual development. That's the reason Jesus said this commanded us to love your enemy. Yes, yes. Don't you ever let him get inside exactly. you. Exactly. I don't you exactly. ever let that, don't you ever let that enemy get inside and it us. It does. That's the enemy in you. That's now, their DNA literally inside of you. This is something that we're dealing with now in, in ministry to the military. Mm. The soldiers promise and the soldiers some. And and they don't they don't know they know some about the soldiers some, but there's a soldier's promise that mm. says if you go to war armed before the Lord mm -hmm. and I remove my enemy from my face, you come home guiltless before God and before wow. the nation. Wow. Wow. Well, well, th well, think about that now. If, if I know that, I can go to war and never hate my enemy. Never. Wow. I, I'm in a covenant place with God. Yes, yes. I'm on a mission with God. Mm -hmm. I, I have a covenant relationship with Gloria. And, and I'm, I've, I have a commitment before God to protect her. Mm -hmm. And I'll do it. I will do it to the point if I have to, I'll shoot you graveyard dead because I have a responsibility. <laughs> See? Now, God has a covenant responsibility with us, yes. mm -hmm. and we have a covenant responsibility with Him. And when we're a soldier on the battlefield, if we'll keep that covenant with mm -hmm. God, He'll keep our minds clear. He'll keep us so strong good. even if we're in combat. He'll take care of you. You have to, you'll take care of business and do what you have to do and come home guiltless before God and guiltless before the nation. That's all amazing. because of what's in your heart and what's in your thought life. It's amazing. It's so good. And I see it. Now, talking to you, I, I see why. I see why. You're getting that up, yeah. You keep you from connecting with that enemy. enemy. That they don't impact your life anymore. That's dynamite knowledge. Yes, it is. So forgiveness is, is really to keep our own health there, and our own sanity and our own spirit, soul, body integrated. You know, obviously forgiveness is a command, my, but it's my, actually my, physically. My, my, my. Everything, the more I study science, the more crazy I get about God because and love him more because he just reveals, I admire him more and more and more through science because I see all the things that I read in the word playing out yeah, in the, in the field right. of science, evidence, yeah. just more and more evidence of why we should. Your forget, revelation in the should, word gives you revelation in the, the science, science realm because yep, it was the word that created the natural realm. Exactly, in the first place. Why, sure. So it's just catching up. It's just another way. It's just a tangible way of seeing, you know, another way of looking at God, another way of seeing how He's blessed us so gloriously and how things Thank work. God. And That's it's so God. exciting. God. It's got to the point when I, that's, that's sci the study of science, I do it alongside, I have to study at least two hours a day in science to keep up with the field. And I do it alongside my Bible study. It gets to the point where I battle to get past like a, 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 like two lines in a scripture because it's so exciting. Because there's, a, there's, an ali there's a, a life. And then I always think of when you talk about the example that we're not playing a nine innings game. You know how you always you're playing to win. You know that's always stuck in my mind that if we just if we just persevere with these things, we will always win. You know, always. We, we always will win. Yeah. And if people can get that revelation of the power that God has given us to win, to survive, to whatever it looks like. It's There's so, something we've got the la this last couple of minutes here before we go. 
that, uh, and because as the Lord leads, I really do want to touch on this next week. That places grief in its place. Yes. That is the highest stress most people ever go through. Totally negative stress. Yeah. Now, grief is the, is comes from loss. Mm -hmm. It's the sense of loss. Mm -hmm. The spirit of grief is the spirit of loss. Mm -hmm. The scripture tells us to sorrow not. We're not a people without hope. He mm -hmm. bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. We ought to stand against grief just like we stand against Absolutely. sin. Now, mm -hmm. grief, loss, depression. Mm -hmm. I had, the word of the Lord came to me. I, I, I battled depression and, 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 and the, the God just delivered me from it. And in, in mm -hmm. fact, by glory of praying over me wow. as part of that whole process I was telling you about earlier. Yeah. Now, uh, <laughs> we've got just these few seconds, but I, I, I want to I want to place this in here. Mm -hmm. He said, grief, a uh, depression is grieving over things you haven't lost yet. Oh, wow. But you see it as a loss. Mm. And it just goes on and on and on. And the devil has captured your mind mm. and all that whole process. Mm -hmm. Now, there needs to be ministry that has the, the truth and the power of God to break that cage. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it, people get around it and it just seems like- There's you, no way out. No way out of this there thing. There is. Mm. But there he is, because mm -hmm. I know I got out. <laughs> well, God, God broke me Well, out. I'll give you some of the science facts in the next week's broadcast that show you how much power God has given us to get out of mental yeah, ill health. You. Yeah, there's two things we want to get into next, okay. next week. One, we want to get into that, and the other is uh, the traumatic injury. brain injury. Yeah, traumatic brain injury, and then timing of how we change. Yeah. The changes in Yeah, time. yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo, glory to God. Glory. Yes, amen. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. The Who Switched Off My Brain Package provides real answers to real questions. Learn what is happening in your brain, what it means to build a thought, how to renew your mind, how you can replace toxic thoughts with healthy ones, and much more. This package by Dr. Caroline Leaf now includes the Who Switched Off My Brain revised edition book, the Who Switched Off My Brain workbook and DVD set, and the follow-up book titled Switch On Your Brain, which contains her 21-day detox plan. Dr. Leaf has studied the mind-brain connection since the early 1980s, and she desires to help you optimize your thinking. It is possible to live an emotionally happy and physically healthy life by controlling your thoughts. Learn to break the cycle of toxic thinking and release the full potential of your brain power. Learn how to detox your thinking and reverse the effects of toxic thoughts with the Who Switched Off My Brain package. Four powerful resources by Dr. Caroline Leaf available at a special package price of $65.98. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call toll free 800-600-7395. Release the full potential of your brain power as you renew your mind with the Word of God. Order your package today. Now, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, then where the scripture says, bring every thought into captivity. If, if you've never been born again, you don't have the power in you to do that. You, you can't do it. Mm. You can try and try and try, but, but the, see, the, the scripture said that, that our weapons are not natural, but they're powerful mm. through God. They're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Mm. And so, this, you don't have any life in you. You have existence in you, but you don't have the life of God in you until you receive Jesus right. as your Lord and Savior. Now, He's available right now. Don't go another second without Him. Listen to what this says. 
If you'll confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, Praise God. for the, with the heart man believes to righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, pray this out loud with me. I'm going to lead you in prayer. You pray when, when Gloria and Dr. Leaf pray, and you just, you just believe God, and, and like I said, do it out loud. You need to hear these words with your own ears. O oh God in heaven. O oh God in heaven. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I believe with all my heart. I believe with all my heart. That you have raised Jesus from the dead. That you have raised Jesus from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I repent of sin. I repent of sin. I renounce it. I renounce it. I renounce the past. I renounce the past. I renounce the devil and everything he stands for. I renounce the devil and everything he stands for. Fill me, sir. Fill me, sir. With your precious Holy Spirit. With your precious Holy Spirit. I receive him now. I receive him now. I fully expect my supernatural prayer language. I fully expect my supernatural prayer language. I expect to, to speak and pray and praise in other tongues. I expect to speak and pray and praise in other tongues. Just like they did on the day of Pentecost. Just like they did on the day of Pentecost. I receive it. I receive it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, let me tell you what I want you to do. I want you to let us know if you prayed that with us because I want to send you this little brochure and this little book that will help you get started reading your Bible. You don't need to struggle with this book. This is where your life is. This is where your new thoughts are. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. There are those who've said that some of the diseases that are on the rampage right now are God's way of punishing immoral people today. There is absolutely no scriptural basis for that. God does not bring disease on the human race. In fact, if there's anybody who hates it, it's Jesus. The devil is the one who's trying to tell us otherwise. He's promoting a lie. It's time for you and I as believers to put a stop to that lie. We need to tell people that God loves them and he has the desire and power to heal them. Jesus Christ is not their captor. He's the one who can set them free. Um, back when we first started this broadcast, I didn't want to receive offerings at all. I mean, this is years ago, and particularly when I went on the radio. I, man, there was, there was, back in those days, all them old... Uh, the, uh, just a, a lot of junk on there, begging for money and all that. Yeah. And I said, Lord, I don't, I don't even want to receive offering. We can, no, he said, that's unscriptural. You don't need to be doing that. He said, you need Friday should be offering day on the broadcast wow. because he said, you, you have, well, let me just read it right here. This is what he said. Um, Let him that's taught in the word communicate or respond unto him that teaches in all good things. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Mm -hmm. But he that sows to his spirit shall of the spirit reap life, or zoe, everlasting. Now here's one thing we know for sure. Jesus said the sower sows the word, and Satan's coming immediately to steal it. His whole, he's stuck with this. He can't do anything. He can't do anything to you if you, re, if you refuse to say what he says. Jesus said, I only say what I hear my father say, and it's the father that dwells within, he does the work. That is the heavenly process that has been enforced in this earth since creation day. Satan is stuck with it. You and I are blessed with it. Mm -hmm. If you ever start looking at him and start saying what he's saying, then he can do the work. Exactly. So how, how, what are we doing here? Reaping life everlasting. Once you sow 
into that message and receive it. You, you in, inquire of God first. What, what would you have me sow? And then, like, like his mama told those people, said, whatever he says to you, do, do it. Now, when you do that, all of a sudden, the roots start. Life comes into your spirit, and the Word begins to root in there. Now, what does it do? Ha, 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 begins to control your thinking. And by doing that, it controls everything around you. Father, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Reveal, please, to our partners and to all in the sound of my voice their part of the finances of this ministry. And we give you the praise and the honor. We release the, the, the force and increase of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you Monday. Praise God. Until then, this is Kenneth and Gloria and Dr. Caroline Lee. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. I'm so glad you're here. We're going to be back Monday. We'll see you then. Remember this. Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Thank you for joining us today on the Believer's Voice of Victory. For this week's broadcasts on DVD or MP3 on CD, go to kcm.org or call or write to us today. Remember this week's product offer. These ministry tools are designed to help you get the Word working in your life so you can experience all God has for you. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, be sure to request your free salvation package. This will help you understand who you are in Christ and how to start living your new life in victory.